In this video, we'll set up PopStarter to play PS1 games over SMB on your PS2. If you haven't set up SMB yet, check out my previous video first. It's required for this to work. All right, let's jump into it. Next, grab the PS1 SMB resources zip file. You'll find the download link in the video description. Once the download is complete, right-click the zip file and extract it. Now, keep your PS2 running with OPL open, and double-check that the Ethernet cable is connected to your console before we continue. After extracting the folder, open your web browser and enter your router's default gateway, usually 192.168.0.1, into the address bar, then press enter. Once inside your router settings, find and note your PS2's IP address. After that, log out, close the browser, and open the extracted folder. Next, Open the copy in PS2 memory card root folder. Then open the popstarter folder. Then open the ipconfig.dat file with notepad. Now, type in your PS2's IP address first. For NetMask, enter 255.255.255.0, and for Gateway, type your PC's IP address. Once done, save and close the file. Next, open the smbconfig.dat file in Notepad. First, type your PC's IP address. Then, enter the name of your shared folder, in my case, it's SMB. Next, add your PC's username and password. Finally, save and close the file. Next, go back and extract the PSXVCD zip file. Then install PSXVCD. If it's already installed on your system, you can skip this step. Once it's installed, close the window. I've got my PS1 backup stored in this folder, and we'll be converting them into .vcd files. Now, let's open up PSXVCD. Click on Add Directory, and select the folder with your PS1 backups then press OK. Under Destination, click Browse and choose the SMB folder we set up earlier, then hit OK. Make sure that only VCD box is checked here. Finally, click Convert. I'll fast forward through the conversion. Once it's done, Close this window and go back to the PS1 SMB Resources folder. Open the copy in Pops folder. Select all the files and copy them.
Now open your SMB folder. Go into the POPs folder and paste the files there. Next, you'll also need to copy the pops underscore iox.pak file into the pops folder. I can't provide this file due to copyright reasons, but make sure you add it, else your PS1 games won't run. Next, run ps1 underscore smb underscore converter.exe to convert your PS1 backups. Shout out to El Isra. Once it's done, press enter to close it. After that, run vmc and multidiscreator.exe. This will set up virtual memory cards for your PS1 games and also make multidisc game swappable on the fly. Now close this window, and now let's move on to applying patches. Go back to the PS1 SMB resource folder. Extract the PS1 underscore patches zip file. Then open the extracted folder. From there, go into Hugo Pock Pop Starter fixes and then Pops Game fixes. Big thanks to Hugo Pock for creating these fixes. Here you'll find patches for a variety of games. As an example, for this tutorial I'll be using Tekken 3 for a single disc game and Final Fantasy 7 for a multi-disc game. Choose your game region. Then choose the aspect ratio. If you are playing on a modern display choose 16x9 or if you are playing on a CRT TV choose 4x3. Now minimize this window. Now go back inside the pops folder. Now run ps1 underscore smb underscore converter dot exe again. Since no new backups were added, it will just list the already converted games. The game names appear in yellow and the folder names in green. For example, here Final Fantasy 7 Disc 1 is shown in yellow and above it, the folder name is in green. The D1 simply means disc one of a multi-disc game. Note down the folder name, minimize the converter window, and open that game's folder. Next, bring back the patches window we minimized earlier. Copy the patch and paste it into the game folder. For multi-disc games, repeat the same process for D2, D3, and so on. Now let's apply patches for Tekken 3.
Now it's time to add covers for our PS1 games. Close this window and open OPL Manager. Click on Batch Actions, select Art Download, and then check all the boxes and click Start. Once all the covers are downloaded, close OPL Manager. Before we switch over to the PS2, there's one last thing I want to show you how to delete PS1 games. To do that, open the SMB folder again and bring up the PS1 underscore SMB underscore converter window. For example, if I want to delete a game like Crash, here's how to do it. First, click on the last green character of the folder name, hold Shift, and then click on the first green character to select it. Press Ctrl plus C to copy. Then minimize this window. Now, in the root of your SMB folder, go to the search bar at the top right, type two double quotes, then move the cursor between the two quotes and paste the folder name by pressing Ctrl plus V. Then click on search, and all the game files will be highlighted in yellow. Simply select those highlighted files and delete them, but be careful to only delete the highlighted ones. That's everything set up on the PC side. Now close this window and plug in your USB drive Next open the PS1 SMB resource folder, then open copy in PS2 memory card root folder and copy the pop starter folder onto your USB. Once that's done, safely remove the USB drive and head over to your PS2. On your PS2, run U Launch Shelf or W Launch Shelf. Plug in your USB, scroll down to Mass. Highlight the Pop Starter folder. Press R1 and select Copy. Now go back. Open MC0. Press R1 and paste. Even if you already have a pop starter folder from my earlier USB tutorial, this will simply add the SMB files while keeping your USB files. Once that's done, reboot your PS2 and launch OPL. Once in OPL, Press Start and go into Settings. Scroll down and set Application Start Mode to Auto. Then save your settings. Press Circle to return to the menu, then press right on the D-pad. Now you'll see your PS1 games listed under the Apps menu with their cover art. To demonstrate disk swapping, I'll use Final Fantasy VII, switching from Disc 2 back to Disc 1. Make sure to bookmark this section, 
as these buttons combinations are essential for swapping discs when prompted by the game. I will be demonstrating how to switch to disc 1, but the same process applies to all discs. The only difference is the arrow key, which changes depending upon the disc, as shown in the next image. Let me show you the process step by step, and afterwards, I'll demonstrate the actual disc swap. As you can see that we have successfully swapped from disc 2 to disc 1 using the key combination. Using this key combination, you can perform an in-game reset. This will bring Freemacboot and Funtuna users back to the main menu without needing to physically reset the console. Now, let's quickly cover a couple of common issues. First scenario, if you get a black screen after the PS1 logo while using an HDMI converter, just open cheats.txt in your pops folder Add dollar HD TV fix at the top and save the file. That should fix it. Second scenario. If you're stuck on the Pops SMB starting screen and see a logon has failed error, it means your ipconfig.dat or smbconfig.dat details are wrong. Just correct them and copy the updated files back to the Pop Starter folder on your memory card. And that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching till the end. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee on Ko-Fi. Even a small contribution goes a long way in helping me keep these tutorials coming. Special thanks to Kraken, El Isra, Hugo Pacht, and Shaolin Assassin. See you in the next one.